energizer for our day and also for the weekend ahead. So let's find the feet kind of comfortable, shake out a little bit, start to get the blood flowing, things moving. Whew. Just a little bit. Yeah, whatever the body is like saying to do right now. And then start to work your way to mountain pose. The feet hip width distance apart. All four corners of the feet in great contact with the mat. Shoulders over hips. Hips over ankles. Ears over shoulders. Hands by your side and palms face forward. Okay, and now we're going to breathe. So let your breath settle here. And let's observe the breath for a moment. So we're nice and tall standing. So exhale through the nose. And then as you inhale, notice as the breath comes in through the nose, past the heart, it keeps going all the way out through the limbs. Body gets super big and full with breath, and then exhale, everything softens. And let's inhale again. Exhale, soften. And one more time, just notice the breath going everywhere, just opening up all the energy centers, any stuffness in the body, start to clear it out with breath. Good, and release. All right, let's add some arms to this movement now. So palms out, and just start to draw your arms up and stop wherever your arms are telling you to stop. Bring your palms together, and exhale, hands to heart. And again, it's reach up, lengthen the spine, and hands to heart. And two more times like that. Just go at your own pace here. Feel that nice, full, deep breath as you inhale, softening as you exhale. And bring your hands down by your side. All right, so we're going to do our um, Drew Energy sequence. So take your feet slightly wider, not wide at all, just slightly wider than hip width distance. And we're going to start by stepping forward and back on the right. So right foot steps forward, arms up, right foot steps back, arms down. Yeah, preparing the body for movement. Starting to open things up. The hip opens up a little bit here. And then start to bring your feet back side by side and go on the left. Left foot forward and back. Style. Things are really soft and flowy. So let's come feet back side by side. And again, slightly wider than hip width distance. The knees and hips are soft. And we're going to do cats and cows from here. So um, bring your hands to your thighs and just round forward into a nice cat back. And then open up, arch your back into the cow. And it's forward and back. A lot of shoulders here, right? They're doing a lot of the work. And let your knees and hips just move. Make sure you're not throwing your head back at any time. Okay, so when we come into the sway back of the cow, 
Sometimes the head wants to just throw itself back. This movement is led from the spine, the shoulders, the head just follows along for the ride. And the next time you're forward, just hold here and roll your hands up your legs. Roll the shoulders back a couple of times. Okay, and we're going to start some nice tilting here. So with your left palm facing up, and your right arm up, it could be here, it could be here. We're going to tilt to the left and then make a big circle with the arms and tilt to the right. So that's what we're doing, we're circling. Side to side. So the arms, again, could be lower. What's important here is that the feet stay planted so that you get a nice stretch in the side. And the next time you're over to the left, so your right arm is pulling over to the left and your left arm is over to the right, kind of hang out here, release just a little bit, come deeper, release a little bit, come deeper, Release a little bit, come deeper. And let's circle back around, right arm to the left, left arm to the right. Release a little bit, come deeper. Oh, you feel that nice opening in the side body. Release, release and deepen. And one more time, deepen and hold and then circle back around to center. Okay, so we're going to be doing a little bit of twisting here. Again, the feet are comfortable, knees and hips are soft, right hand to the right thigh, and it's up and back. And then we go to the left, up and back to the right. So we're just gently twisting open. Notice the front of the shoulder here. So your twist might look more like this, but you're still getting a little opening in the shoulders. Back. Yeah. Energy building sequence here. And we started to the right. So the next time you go to the left, you'll be even. Come back to center. Just shake around, shake things out. Now let's find mountain pose with the feet hip width distance apart, feet grounded, everything nice and strong, right? The muscles of the legs are engaged, the shoulders are back over the ankles, ears are back over the shoulders, and just either defocus or close your eyes and see if you can Feel and notice your energy. How's it moving? Great, and let's shake things out, come to the top of the mat. We're going to work our way down. Okay, so we will be doing both, but then as a nice um, bonus for having done both, we'll do water wheels. So let's go ahead and have the feet hip width distance apart. Top of the mat. Inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, just a nice gentle swan dive. Hands to the thighs, knees bend, hips back, shine your heart forward, half lift. Sink the hips down, hands come to the mat, and step back to down dog. Now remember, you could always put your hands on a chair or the wall and be in down dog there. Okay. Some people prefer that because of wrist issues or just having the head below the heart like this doesn't suit them at some point. You can, that's always an option. And let's bend one knee and then the other to have your hands on a chair or the wall. Press one heel down and hold. 
and press the other heel down and hold. Now press two heels down and hold. And we're going to be bringing the knees to the mat. Let's try and keep them together, getting them to touch the mat at the same time. So a lot of balance, core, and mindfulness right there, just in that simple move. Sit off to the side and find seated mountain pose. So we're going to take two breaths here and think about lengthening the spine as the arms come up and as they go down. So find your seated mountain pose, palms out, inhale, lengthen, easy to feel the spine lengthen as you draw your arms up to wherever, right, whatever point they're going to. Now turn your palms out and even as your arms come down, continue to think about the spine lengthening. All right, and do that one more time. Inhale up. And think about lengthening. Good, and release. Shake things out. Inhale and exhale. All right, we're ready for our core work now. So bend the knees here. Okay, we'll go through a couple of variations and you're going to decide which one works for you. So the first variation on boat, we're sitting here with the knees bent, feet flat on the mat, arms forward, is going to be with a long spine, just coming back and up. And I use the word just, but that doesn't mean that this is, you know, it's not a lot of work, because it certainly is, and you're starting to feel that now a bit. Back and up. We'll do that one more time. All right, relax your arms for a second. Now we're going to add a leg. So we're going to go right leg first and then left leg. So both feet are still on the mat. Take it back and extend your right leg. Try to keep your heel two inches off the mat and come on up. Take it back and extend your left leg. Heel is two inches off the mat and you come up. Okay, so that's the second version, your choice. You might want to do it that way. And here's the final way we'll be doing it, right knee up. Okay, so now whichever way you're doing, we're going four times. Right knee up, arms forward, extend, and up. Let's go three more times with the right leg. Extend, and up. Remember, your foot could be down, or you could be going back and up, and that was four. Who's ready for the left side? We good? Left knee up, arms forward, here we go. Extend and down. You remember, you could be in one of the other versions. We're going four times on the left. Three, good, and four, oh, and up, woo, shake it out. All right, so we went right, left, we're going to go doubles now, okay? Arms are forward and with both feet to the mat, extend, bring the feet back to the mat. Do that three more times. Three and four. Oh, and our final adventure, which some of you will want to do and some of you won't, and you know, if you fall over from this, don't be surprised because I've, I've done that more than once. We're going to take both knees up, arms forward, and extend and up. So this is the double leg version of high boat to low boat. You could be doing one of the other versions that we've already done. Woo! Bring it up and release. Shake things out. All right. We will do obliques from standing, okay? You're gonna have to remind me. Pinky swear. <laughs> I see what you're doing over there. All right, let's get to that um, treat now, the water wheel. Take yourself down to the mat, knees are bent. This is such a great thing for your hips. If you did this every day, your hips would really be happy with you. Two feet to the mat, right knee in, point up, flex down. 
That's what we're doing. We're making a circle, knee in, point up, flex down. And as you move through this, just notice the motion of the hip and see if you can perceive any kind of stuck point and know that this is helping to release that stuckness. And the next time the right knee is in, hold it in, we're going to reverse. So flex the foot, extend the leg. Now draw the leg up, don't fling it up, bring it up, bring the knee in. Flex out, point up, knee in. There you go. And a few more times. Flex out, point up, knee in. And the next time the right knee is in, hold it in. You might be holding your shin or your hamstring here. And see if that left leg wants to extend any amount. It's any amount is fine or not, none at all. Take your right leg out to the right and back to center. All right, now let's hold the leg center. Take your left hand to the outside of your right leg. Take your right arm out to the side and let that left, uh, this is your right knee. Let that right knee come just past your belly button. You're gonna feel a nice stretch here in the IT band area. Hips are on the mat, shoulders are on the mat. And then let that right knee come more to the left. The right hip is going to lift, but the right shoulder stays grounded and gaze toward your right fingertips. And then as you come back around, let your right ankle slide across your left thigh, draw the legs towards you and move around. So you could start out by making circles in one direction and the other and then let the legs come forward and back a couple of times. And come back to center, let's get those legs straight. Hopefully it'll be a beautiful weekend and we can all get some walking in. So we're going to work that ankle point and flex. And circle one direction and the other. Let's release, unwind, bring two feet to the mat, and make gentle butterfly wings. Open and close the knees a few times. All right, if you are ready for water wheel on the left, raise your left leg. There we go. All right, so hands are down by your side. Knee in, point up, flex down, and make a big circle. Knee in, point up, flex down. So connect with your left hip now. See how it's feeling. Releasing any stuckness, also releasing a lot of energy. And the next time your left knee is in, hold it in and we reverse. Flex your left foot, flex out. Remember, we're bringing the leg up, knee in. And the next time the knee is in, hold it, hold your shin or your hamstring, your choice. See if that right leg wants to straighten any amount. Take your, you can take your right arm out to just give you a little more balance here and let that left knee open out to the left and back to center the left leg. All right, 
bring the knee back to center. Now take your right hand outside your left leg. Your left arm goes out from your shoulder. Draw that left knee just past the belly button. We want to stop here, get that nice IT band stretch, and then let the left knee come over to the right as far as it wants with the left shoulder still in contact with the mat. Turn your gaze towards your left fingertips here. Good, and then come back through center, left ankle across right thigh, left foot is flexed, the legs come in, and we're gonna circle one direction, circle the other direction, and at this point you can tell if your hips feel the same or if one feels a little tighter. We'll get back to that in just a second. Come to center here, and let's go ahead and extend the right leg, point and flex. And circle the ankle one direction and the other. All right, let's release, unwind two feet to the mat, let the knees open and close a few times. Now, if you had one hip that felt a, a little tighter than the other, you're going to work that a little more for a minute. If they both felt even, you'll work each one for 30 seconds, okay? So, if your left hip felt a little tighter than your right or vice versa, cross that ankle over the thigh, draw your legs towards you, and move around, okay? If they felt even, just pick a side, move around. And now, if you're staying on one side because it needs extra attention, stay there. And if you're doing both sides, go ahead and switch to your other side. So your opposite ankle on the other thigh and move around. All right, and then unwind your legs, bring two feet to the mat, let your knees open and close. And we'll come to hands and knees. So Remember, hands and knees, if you have um, and desire extra padding for your knees, okay? Go ahead, that extra padding could be a blanket, a towel, pillows, an extra mat, okay? And let's come into a knee down plank. So we're going to take the whole body, walk the arms forward, and we've got the body in one long line in between the knees and the shoulders, and then the head is in line with the um, spine here. So we're in a knee down, knee down plank. And then just take your hips towards your heels. And now we'll add a little push-up. So come back to knee down plank, bend at the elbows down, up, and press back. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Knee down, plank, down, up, press back. Now, if that doesn't feel good on hands and knees, you could totally do it at the wall. You can also do your push-ups from standing, right? Just drawing the elbows back and really concentrate on those arm muscles. Excellent, good, everybody's finding their way. The next time you press back, bring your big toes together knees wide apart and press back to child's pose and let everything relax here in child's pose you want your forehead connected to the earth so it's either resting on your mat or your hands and sometimes even those things are too far away and you can make fists or if you have a block rest your head on your block it just helps you lift a little more Alright, take your hands out by 
your side and find your way into downward facing dog. At any point, down dog, you could have your hands on the seat of a chair or on your wall. All right, inhale and exhale. And from here, we're going to start walking the feet to the hands, taking them a little wider as you go. Bring your, thigh, uh, your forearms to your thighs, take your palms together at heart center, press through the feet, lift up, inhale, and as you exhale, step back to mountain pose. All right, let's shake it out. Okay, so we're going to do a, a little sun salutation with a low crescent lunge. So in the low crescent lunge, your knee will be down, if you have extra padding and you feel like you would like that for low crescent lunge, grab that. If not, and you feel like you need extra padding but you don't have anything, you can just flip up the edge of your mat. Okay? All right. So whether your knees need extra padding or not, a lot of it depends on the surface you're practicing on, right? Some of it depends. A lot of it depends on your knee, so you always need to find what's best for you. Find mountain pose at the top of your mat here, and breathe. Good. Inhale, float your arms up. Exhale, swan dive. We're folding right from the hip creases. The legs are straight. So maybe your swan dive goes high, maybe it goes medium, maybe it goes lower. Anywhere in between, it's your swan dive. Bend your knees, hands to the thighs, shine your heart forward, inhale. Sink the hips down, hands to the mat, and take your right leg back, you're in a lunge. Okay, there's not a lot of pressure on the hands here because your core is supporting you. And now bring your hands down and find your way up. Nope, never mind. Bring your back knee down, that would be your right knee. Here's our low crescent lunge we were just talking about. Okay, extra padding for your knee if desired, arms up, inhale. Now we're gonna engage the core and without collapsing, just draw the arms back. Low crescent lunge with the arms back. Draw your arms up once again. And bring one hand to either uh, side of your left foot so your hands are down on the mat and find your way to a plank. Knees up or knees down. Remember, you could be at the wall for your plank. And chaturanga, this brings us all the way to the mat. Back bend here, little cobra, shoulders toward the ears down, the, uh, where they roll down the spine and your heart shines forward. No pressure on the hands here. Yes, good, release and find your way to downward facing dog. So coming into table and then lifting to down dog is always a great way to get there. There's other ways, inhale and exhale here. And then just take any journey, bringing your feet to your hands. If you like to just take a bunch of little steps, a couple of big steps, a little hippity hop, however you wanna get here. When you get to the top of your mat, half lift, forward fold, and float the arms out and up, palms touch. Yes, and hands come heart center. All right, let's take a breath. Any questions about that? Is everybody ready to go on the other side? Remember, when we bring the knee down, you can just flip up the edge of your mat if that knee would like some extra padding, okay? All right, here we go. Feet are hip width distance. Let's take a moment here, breathing. Feel the energy move. Inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, swan dive. Remember, you're going where you're comfortable. You might want to keep your heart lifted right now. That's fine. Bring your hands to your thighs. Shine your heart forward. Half lift. Sink the hips down. Hands to the mat, step back, left leg to the lunge. Okay, at this point, 
your muscles are supporting you, not your hands, right? Inhale and exhale. Now bring your hands to the mat. Bring your left knee down and set up for low crescent lunge. Okay, you can point your toes behind you. Some people prefer to have them uh, tucked under, okay, and float up. We're in low crescent lunge here, inhale, and then float your arms behind you. Keep your core engaged so you don't land on your thigh. Arms back up. Hands down, and here's where we find, that was graceful, here's where we find our plank. Knees up or knees down, whichever one suits you best right now. Your spine needs to be engaged nice and long. Remember, your hands could be on the wall right now. And you chaturanga down. Another way to do this, again, is just the arms back from here, right? Okay, so we're down. And we're lifting into that cobra once again. And release. Find your way to downward facing dog. Let's see where everybody is. Keep going. I'm just checking things out. Down dog. And then take a journey, bringing your feet to your hands. Nice. Okay, when you get there, half lift, forward fold, yes, and float the arms out and up, palms touch, and hands come heart center. All right, let's find mountain pose and see how everything is feeling now. <sighs> Inhale and exhale. Let's say we get to those obliques. Yes, indeed. I know. I know. Take your feet wider than hip width distance apart and turn the toes out. We're going to make sure the feet are square on the floor, right? So let's make sure we're doing this. Big toe mound in contact with the mat. Outer heel. Inner heel. Little toe mound. You've just made an X. Your feet are nice and square. Hands to your hips, and when you bend your knees, as long as your feet are in this position, the knees are going to go how you want them, which is over the toes. Okay? All right. Great. So now we're going to bend the knees, bring the hands to the shoulders here. If this isn't comfortable, you can always bring them back down. And tilt oh, to the right and up. Okay, we're going to go back over to the right now and extend the arms by the ears. Bring hands to the shoulders and up, straighten the legs. Bend the knees, tilt to the left and up. Tilt back left, extend the arms. Hands back to shoulders, straighten the body up, straighten the legs. Everybody got that? We're making sense here a little bit. We're gonna make it a little more dynamic. Okay, so bend your knees as you tilt to the right. Straighten as you come up. Bend the knees as you tilt back to the right. Extend those arms and straighten as you come up. Bend the knees, elbows left. Straighten, come up. Bend, extend the arms. Straighten, come up, bend right, and up, straighten the arms, and up, bend left, and up, straighten the arms, and up. You know we have to have a big finish here, so we're going to bend right and hold, and then take the arms long, bring them back. Take arms long, bring them back. That was too long. Back, last time long. Back and up. Okay, to the left. Over we go, stay here, it's long. And in, and two. And in, three. And in, and four. And in, and up, release the arms. 
Shake things out. Inhale and exhale. Let's heel toe those feet together and work on a little bit of balance here. So we're going to be, remember at the beginning where we brought the arms up, hands down, now we're going to add a little balance to that movement. So we want the feet hip width distance, feet are square, remember we just went over that, feet stay square. Take a couple of breaths. All right, we're going to inhale the arms up, take the palms together and raise the right heel. And release. Inhale up, palms together, raise the left heel. And release. Inhale up, arms together, carefully raise both heels. If your ankles start to wobble, come right back down. Good, and release. So that double heel may or may not be for you today. And you can take your heel lift to a knee lift when you're ready. So it's right, left, double, or right, left, right, left. You've got options here. Double is double ankles, not double knee, right? If anybody does double knee and hangs out up there, show me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Teach me how you did that. Remember, we don't want the ankles to wobble, so if you have to leave out the double uh, heel lift, leave that out. We are moving through balance just like we do in our everyday life, right? It's not like we take one position and stand around in it. After you finish this round, come back to Mountain Pose. And just, once again, feel both feet grounded. Breathe a few times, see how everything's feeling. All right, everybody okay with that? Did that work? Now here's another balance. This is the warrior two. Take your legs super wide, okay? Not so often thought of about as a balance pose, but here we go. When we turn the right toes forward, the left toes in at an angle, the feet are still square and the right knee bends, shoulders over hips and arms out, we are balancing the strength of the lower body and the ease and lightness of the upper body and take your gaze calmly past your right fingertips. Okay, we'll move in and out of this a couple of times. Straighten your right knee, bring your hands to your heart, look forward, and then open back to warrior two. The gaze is returning to the right fingertips. Straighten, look forward, open. Straighten, look forward, open, and find that sense of balance, right? It's called Stira, the lower part, strength. Sukha, the upper part, ease. So find that balance. All right, bring your hands to heart center. Turn all 10 toes forward. And we're going to fold from the hip creases slowly. If you choose to stop with your heart over your hips, that's fine. If you choose to go halfway, that's fine. If you choose to go lower, that's fine. Release your hands to your legs from wherever you are in this forward fold. All right, now bring your hands to your hips. Come halfway up and come the rest of the way up. We stop halfway to give the body a little chance to reorient. Heel toe your feet together, shake things out. We're getting ready for warrior two on the left. Left toes are forward. The feet are grounded, all four corners of the feet. When you bend your left knee, it's going to go straight through the center of the foot. And it's also over the ankle. Shoulders over hips, arms out. Balancing in warrior two. That right foot is grounded also, so it's not up. Gaze past your left fingertips. Let's move in and out.
out a few times. Straighten your leg, bring your palms together, gaze forward and open. Straighten forward and open. Take it forward and open and hold. Find that balance, strength and ease, gazing calmly past the left fingertips. Now bring your hands to your heart, turn your toes forward and come back into your forward fold and this time just let it go. Okay, so you can take this anywhere you want, move things around and this is what we want to do right now. Anyway, is start to figure out like what parts of the body need a little activity right now, a little shaking out. You could be doing it from higher or a lower and then come back to center bring your hands to your hips come halfway up come the rest of the way up and bring your legs back to center okay so in preparation for returning to the earth we're going to find mountain pose take a little scan of the body here and as you scan, notice any parts that feel like they need to do a little more wiggling or releasing and just go for it. Okay, so just go ahead and shake things out. Start to look around your space. Do you want a blanket, socks, something to cover you when we um, start moving to final relaxation? Okay, do you have an eye pillow? Do you have lavender? Rub your hands in your lavender. Okay. And as always, I will tell you, if you need lavender, come and get some. I grow it in my yard. Even in the winter, it seems to last. All right, so let's come to the top of the mat. Feet hip width distance apart. And breathe. There's also oil, you know, like a little roll-on lavender you can do. It's just a very calming, soothing smell. Okay, let's inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, swan dive. Take a half lift. Sink your hips down and find your way to down dog. Now, if you've had it with down dog, you can go to table if you prefer. And we're just going to let the hips go side to side. Come back to center. Bring the knees down. Sit off to the side. Find seated mountain pose once again. The feet are flexed. The spine is long. And we're going to do two breaths, extending the spine on the inhale and the exhale, just like we did earlier. Okay, palms out. Exhale. Inhale, lengthen your spine as you draw your arms up. Turn your palms out. Exhale, lengthen your spine as your fingertips touch down. And one more time. All right, and when you get here, just Give everything a little bit of a shake. Inhale and exhale. And we'll do a couple of soft forward folds. So with no goal in mind, no like I'm going to touch my toes, we're going to just draw the arms gently up and just melt forward. Roll your hands up your legs and one more time. Go ahead and bend the knees and slowly roll down. Okay, so go ahead and do a little butterfly wings here. We came into an active 
reclined pigeon earlier. We're coming back into pigeon now and we're going to hold it stable a little longer. So take your right ankle across your left thigh and start to draw your legs in towards you. Take your right hand and press that right knee away because the right knee might be having a tendency to head toward your face. Just press it away a little bit. That'll help open the groin a little more. And hold on to your either left hamstring. Some people like to hold on to the left shin here, okay? Or maybe just the side of your leg. And make sure that your left knee is in line with your left shoulder and your right foot is flexed. So here we are in pigeon. And we're going to hold this, so just go ahead and send releasing breath to that hip. Now just take your left leg straight up. We'll work that ankle again. Point and flex. And circle one direction and the other. And then release everything. Unwind two feet to the mat. Gently let the knees open and close. Little butterfly wings. Here we go on the left, left ankle across the right thigh, that left foot is flexed, and draw your legs in towards you. Put your left hand on your left knee and press it a little bit away, okay? And now check to see where your right knee is. You want that right knee in line with your right shoulder. And hold on to your hamstring or your shin if you like, or the side of your leg, and breathe into your left hip. Now straighten your right leg, point and flex the foot. And circle one direction and the other. And release everything. Unwind two feet to the mat. Open and close your knees. All right, we're going to do some windshield wipers now. So take your feet mat width distance apart. Take your arms long out to the side and start out very gentle. You're going to find it where your um, windshield wipers are best for you today. Take your knees to the right and your gaze to the left. A little gentle sway. Come up, knees left, gaze right, little sway. And then just keep going. You can stay right with that gentle sway. You can start to take it a little deeper. Pay attention. Your body will tell you when you've gone far enough. The shoulders stay grounded here. The head is moving side to side. And the next time you go to the right, stay there with your gaze toward your left fingertips. Come back through center. Take your knees to the left and your gaze right and stay there. And come back center.
center. All right, and let's go ahead and extend the arms overhead, extend the legs long, inhale. Exhale, draw your knees in, hold hamstrings or shins, and then rock from side to side. Give your spine a little massage here. And come back to center. We're going to place the hands on the knees and make tiny circles. So press your knees away. Hands don't come off the knees. Take your knees to the right, in, to the left, and forward. So the hands are controlling so that the knees don't make like crazy big circles. That's why we keep the hands on the knees. These are nice, tiny, controlled circles, one direction. And hold the next time your knees are in, take a breath and go the opposite direction. Away to the left, in and to the right. All right, next time your knees are in, bring them in, bring your feet down. Okay, so they're about hip width distance apart now on the mat. Extend your arms long out from your shoulders. Spread your fingers wide and make a gentle fist. Extend through the fingers and make a gentle fist. Extend and make a gentle fist. One more time, extend. Feel that energy going all the way up your arm and make a gentle fist and now rotate the wrists one direction and the other. Awesome, we were moving the head side to side. So now take your hands down by your side here and just tap into how your body's feeling. Do any final wiggling, any final movement, any realignment that is required for you right now. Play with having your knees bent and your legs straight. See where that is for your lower back. And we're looking for our final relaxation position here. So just move around, play around until you have found a place where you can just be for a couple of minutes in our most important pose of the entire practice where we get to absorb the benefits of the work that we just did, final relaxation. So come into your most comfortable spot here. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Just let your body melt onto the earth. The earth supports you. Your work is done. Be in your final relaxation.
slowly begin to bring your awareness back to your space. Invite a deeper breath. Gently bring movement back to your body, wiggle fingers and toes. And on your next inhale, stretch long. Exhale and draw your knees in. Give yourself a hug. Find your way over to a side, taking a breath here. And then find your way up to a nice, easy seat. As you turn your gaze to your own good heart and your bright spirit, thank and honor yourself for your practice. And we thank and honor each other for sharing this time. Namaste.